You're listening to the Proposify Biz Chat with Kyle Rackey, a podcast for entrepreneurs looking to scale. This episode is brought to you by Proposify, software that streamlines your proposal process, impresses clients, and helps you close more deals. Head to proposify.com to start your free trial today. Give people, also give people a little bit of context and then we're <laughs> going to get into some actual, you know, valuable sales and marketing stuff. But yeah. uh, I'm here at TNC, uh, put on, it's a, it's traffic and conversion. It's a, um, it's an event put on by Digital Marketers, one of the best marketing conferences in the world. Here in San Diego, it's an annual conference. Marcus Murphy is here joining me. Hey, hey. The I I feel your like your title is different every week. It's like is it sales director? Yeah, so it's it's director of sales and monetization, which is, sounds pretentious. Oh, because I said to somebody, say Marcus is the sales director, and they said no, he's the monetization director of monetization. I was like, no. Well, okay, so here's the deal: sales teams report to me. Mm. Customer success teams report to me. Uh, business development, the entire partner program and channel. Uh, and then also any strategic partnerships that kind of falls under my umbrella. So it's a lot of people facing it's just everything. You yeah, I mean monetization is a big umbrella for like people and stuff. Right? People and stuff. People and stuff. Monetization. <laughs> but hey, what's your name? Director of people and stuff. <laughs> can that be the new title? I really hope so. I As mean, of yeah, uh, you dubbed it, so you can. I'll take a knee, and you you make me the director of people and stuff. Excellent. <laughs> um, so Marcus is here. Where I'm I'm super excited because I live from as I told uh, Jason and Amara on the last. Uh, uh, podcast that we just episode. You know, I'm I'm not from the land down under. I'm from the land up over, Nova Scotia. Okay, time out. That's <laughs> not a thing. That's, <laughs> that's not a that's thing. A, uh, you I, can't be from Canada and call it the land over. The land up over. Yeah, it's not the, the land, land up no, over. That, There's no such. That's thing. what I'm calling Canada now. The land up over. Um, anyway, no, I don't get to see people very often in person. Yeah. Um, although I've seen you in like every city in the U.S. We apparently, have. like Boston, we, Boston, Austin, Phoenix, Austin. Yeah, everywhere. all those kind of San rhyme. Francisco. San Francisco. We met that there. Was we met. That was when we met mm-hmm. in a coffee shop, an av- very average commercial coffee shop. I got to see you had a Proposify shirt on. You kind of had like a little like emo haircut at that time. Oh yeah, yeah. I did. Some Chuck Taylors. You were like super like yeah, I'm a founder, but I like a code a little. Like that's kind of <laughs> how that's your vibe. That was your vibe. And then and then. Uh, and I, we just slammed out because you were at the oh, time yeah. you were at Infusionsoft. At, yeah, and I was I was at Dreamforce at the time and super overwhelmed trying to figure out you know how do I steal Salesforce's partners away to bring to go into the Infusionsoft <laughs> channel and I was looking at you and I'm like hey man you should be a certified partner no you shouldn't you shouldn't be actually you <laughs> you you should be in a um, circa 1990 uh, you know kind of I don't know rom com. <laughs> uh, you know, alternative band. I thought you were going to say <laughs> I should be in the band, not a surf. You should be in a band, not a surf. Yeah. Yeah, you should. Okay. Okay, so let's get into some stuff. S- so should I interview you, or how does this work? Well, it's, this is apparently the biz chat, so I, I guess I'm interviewing you. Now, you are doing, like, I don't know, a talk every two talks a day or something crazy like that. Yeah. How are you? I know you're a, a seasoned. What was the word used in your bio, like a fancy word for speaker? Uh, oh, gosh. <laughs> No, um, that was my Twitter bio from like 12 years ago. Well, we're, we're, the past is coming or, back. Orator. Or, or, no, it was a orator. Feel, I felt like it was a better word than order. It was an order. Was it it was order? order because... Because I know what the word order means. Yeah, well, okay. But it's, I didn't know what the word It's a fancy word, word for guy who yells you orate. and stuff. You orate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Orator. Uh, you're giving, uh, I don't know, like five or six talks at this show? Yeah, so the first day I did, um, yeah, I had, I had three uh, one was on uh, the kind of how to how to navigate strategic partnerships. The other one was on kind of uh, how to prospect. So the forgotten art of prospecting was the name of that one, and kind of why we've abandoned it and abandoned kind of like some of the things that we've been doing and, and a lot more inbound marketing world stuff and, and being able to nurture clients and 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 that was that was really awesome because a lot of my teams actually do still prospect every single day even though they have this incredible amount of leads and nurture that comes from marketing so that was really a really really cool talk um, and then tomorrow I have a big talk which I'm really excited about which is the 10 things that every marketer needs to know about selling in 2018 whoa it sounds it sounds a little cocky how many things there's there's 10 10 okay yeah, yeah yeah so i feel bad there's all marketers in the room and everybody's gonna be like well it's this asshole sales guy gonna tell me oh man you know i did and i'm not gonna ask you to like repeat the content of your talks because people you know if they're listening to this they should be here for sure. it yeah, yeah um but it is very intimidating doing talks i uh, i was privileged with doing a talk at tnc last year you were uh, and I was terrified. I rewrote it the night before. I drank a quart of vodka. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Whoa! To do it, like I needed that. And uh, 
<laughs> you know. Wait, I have a question. Yeah. Okay, so I do love speaking. Yeah. I, I'm not afraid to get on stages anymore. I feel like I have had a lot of reps in being able to do that. What have you? What is the scariest thing about speaking in front of people for you? Well, exactly what you said is that if if you got to read the room, you got to like anything. You always have to know your audience. And if you feel like you're like if I have to, if I'm getting asked to speak in front of a group of you know college kids that are doing startups, yeah, you're I'm you're, like you're a king. I'm a king. I'm oh, like yeah. oh man, I've got a startup that like a, a software company that makes money. Yep. And I've got ten years of experience in being an entrepreneur. Like I've got something like they can't stump me. But then, like you said, when you're standing up in a room full of marketers or people who are successful yep. business owners or entrepreneurs, you're just like, they're going to call me out on whatever. Like, I can't bullshit anything now. Exactly. So it's funny to me. Yeah. I, I, what, I, what I've always thought, especially with kind of looking at a room of very accomplished people and I'm teaching them something about their industry, that gets a little crazy if you actually don't have anything to add that's valuable. Right. Yeah. And I actually, you know, I, I said this to somebody today. They're like, I'm an introverted person. So when I get on stage, I just don't want to be there. And then I try really hard to be a great speaker. And all of a sudden it starts to collapse around them. Right. So I'll tell you right now, one of the things that I tell every person that's aspiring to be a great speaker is go out there and be vulnerable and tell them you don't know how to do this shit. Mm. Like, go out there and be like, this is the first time I've ever actually stepped on stage. I'm so scared. I'm an introvert. This isn't, this isn't easy for me. And people will want you to win. But the, the, the crazy part is that nobody ever does that. What they do is they go out there and they try to be Tony Robbins or they try to be these like really polished speakers and they go out and, they, and people don't, the, the, the people don't want that. They want, they don't, you, don't, you should never give an audience a gun. And that's what? A, yeah, you should never give the. I know in Canada you don't know what a gun is, but yeah, yeah, you I should know. never give. And you know, I know. Never, I'm not hey, getting into that. Give it to, that's not good. That's <laughs> okay. the way. Yeah, this is going to be cut. This part will be cut right. from the podcast. <laughs> but basically, you don't ever want to give the audience a reason to hate you, and not like you. Yeah. So what you do? Comedians is, often say that too. Is like when they're going to do their like. I think I know you're not supposed to bring up Louis C.K. right now, but uh, you know. He had said something about how, like, most comedians don't want to go off and do, like, a really risque joke, like a really polarizing joke as their first one. Right. Because you, they have to warm you up and get you to like them first, and then you can do that kind of stuff. Right. Uh, but he was just, he would just do that stuff. It's he was like just the wrong. first joke was that. Yeah, yeah. Louis C.K. could do that, though, yeah. because his, he built up a following. He probably wouldn't, didn't, didn't do that. I, so I'm, a, I'm an unbelievable student of comedians. So yes. when I we could talk about this oh for my a gosh, long time. I would because when I I my wife thinks I'm the weirdest person. So everybody listens to podcasts. I listen to your podcast, that kind of stuff. But dude, I listen to comedians in the car all the time. I, I still go back every year and listen to everything Richard Pryor has ever done mm. because his comedic timing was unbelievable. And you want to talk about the best speakers? They are and they, and they. I mean, look at like Dave Chappelle, unbelievable communicator, right? Yes. But he does thousands and thousands. He just shows up at random clubs in the middle of the night, lighting a cigarette, and speaks for three hours, and everybody lets him. And he just runs through material over and over and over again and watches people. And he's just a, he's an unbelievable um, student of communication, right? Mm. And I know communication doesn't have four syllables like I just made it sound. But David, <laughs> David, yeah, communication. Oh, okay, Communi cool. Yeah, communication. Yeah. I didn't notice. No. Okay, thanks. Yeah. But but Dave Chappelle, yeah, I, I'm a I'm a massive fan of comedians for their timing and for how they read a room and just kind of what they lead with. So yeah, I think it's very intentional. You're fucking hilarious. Yeah, sometimes. Man, on stage. Sometimes. Not in person. You're kind of creepy in person, but on stage, <laughs> you're hilarious. Yeah, sometimes. I mean, I feel like most people want most people want to be entertained. Yeah. And they also want to get really good information. At least this group. I don't know. There are people up here that are way like, okay, I'm going to I'm going to write every single point down. You're not going to remember anything. Yeah. You're going to remember the one thing I said. Or at least you're going to try. You should. You should remember the one thing somebody said from that that you can take back and apply to your business. Everything else is going to be like, I see these people, they literally like have their iPads out taking pictures of the slides. I'm like, what are you doing <laughs> with that when you get home, right? Like, what do you do? You're not. You're not doing anything with that. You're taking the pictures to hope maybe you go back, you get back, and you're back in your day-to-day, -day and you don't have it. If you sit down in a presentation and the speaker's relatively good, if you can take one thing away that's really like, man, I'm going to change it. I'm going back right now. I'm going to talk to them. We're going to pivot. Wow. You can, that, that's, that's, that's going to be the goal, right? And you attend conferences and, and watch people speak, not for uh, head knowledge. Because you can get that anywhere. You can read books. You can you know read blog posts. Lead, read ebooks, whatever. Yep. You go to a, a, a place like this yeah. to get inspired and to feel something. Yeah. You know, it's not like, yeah. Well, I mean, what do you mean by get inspired? Like you need to, you need to, you're sitting in a room and you're listening to somebody else talk and you're like, okay, this just reels me back in that I'm, 
I'm doing something right. I'm on the right path. I should be. Like, this is yeah, it's not new information. Right. Most of the time, like, you, you know, you may get a few little like, oh, cool. I never thought about it that way. But most of the time, it's not new information. You're, it's, it's like you're, I don't know. It's like, you know, it, you know how to uh, diet and exercise. You know how to do it. But you need someone kind of like standing over and you kicking your ass yeah. or making you feel like, holy shit, like I'm inspired by, you You're know. making me feel really fat right now. Look, you, no, you lost a lot of I weight. Did. I'm I, st- I'm, I'm I lost weight one. and I still look fat. I'm it's like the one. hard, that's a hard thing to do. It's like, wow, how fat was I? Because <laughs> this is like, you're like, hey man, uh, you, yeah, I'm still on a diet. I'm on, it's a perpetual diet. That should be the name of my <laughs> podcast going for a perpetual diet. It's like, listen, sure Molly and, and Ralph and all those guys would love that. Marcus, we have the same build where uh, we're tick. Handsome. We're T H I C C. We're tick. Thick. No, it's pronounced tick. What's tick? Tick is kind of like the more urban street ghetto kind of way of saying thick, but it's, it's spelled T H I C C. Tick. Like um, that girl's tick. Dude, I have no one ever says that. Well, this is what I heard. Urban, where do you hear it? Urban Halifax? No, one of my employees told me that. I was ticked. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of operation are you running? Um, hey, one of my employees afraid, told me apparently. I was thick, like, just thick, sexy. I don't understand. No, it's like a sexy kind of thing. Okay, I, I'll take your word for so it. You're if any one of my employees is listening to this podcast, do not call me tick ever. Oh, ever. no, it's, it's endearing. Just don't do it's it. It's endearing. It's never going to happen. I don't want it. I just want to be your boss. <laughs> so, right. uh, you know, I was talking about large T-shirts because people wanted our Propose of High T-shirts. And I just said, like, hey, I can, you know, the large one. I said, I can actually fit into this. And I'm a fairly burly fellow. And the other guy was like, well, I'm just fat. So I was like, well, so am I. I was just trying to politely say I'm yeah, fat. Yeah, like I used to, when I was a kid, I was really fat as a kid for a little while. Then I got skinnier again. Yeah. And I used to buy Husky. Was the like that was a thing. was that the porno mag of, of husky no, ladies? No, no. I used to buy husky. Oh uh, <laughs> gosh, no. They were. It was a huskies. pant size somewhere that okay. had like a little bit of elastic in it. Okay. So when you're a kid, you don't feel like you can't move in your right. pants. Like loose pajama pants. <laughs> I can't believe you went there. <laughs> you're like you're the worst. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm the best. Okay, let's get back. Can we get back to something you're, you're useful not learning for the people that would ever listen to this? Well, okay. So I'm just saying, you go to conferences to get inspired. Now, let's just switch gears because I think we have to go soon. I'm going to try to get five minutes. Okay, we got about five minutes left. Right, let's make it hard-hitting. Hard-hitting stuff. Um, let's talk about partnerships. Ooh. You did because you're, you know, you talk a lot about this stuff. You're, uh, you're a seasoned partnership guy. I am. Business development also, as it's called. Yeah. Um, what's the value in agencies partnering? With? With anyone. With anyone. Um, with with digital marketer, yeah, yeah. with software yeah. companies. Nope. I got it. So one of the things that I think is really crazy is that most agencies are fairly cagey. And so they don't feel they, everyone's a competitor, yes. right? Because every other agency is a competitor no matter what. And mm. they've kind of built this. Uh, this is unbelievably wrong. It's unbelievably wrong. But the reason why it's accepted is because it's a scrappy place. It's a scrappy uh, you know, I mean, when you had the agency before, you I hated front, everybody yeah, locally that ran an agency. Absolutely, right? Yeah. Because it's like a scrappy place where no one wants to be friends. And so what I'm trying to do is really tear down those walls, demystify what it really means to be an agency. Because if you start to show that there's so much opportunity out there that you actually need each other, mm-hmm. then that's really what wins. And what I mean by that is, is you don't have competition, you have community. Mm-hmm. You just don't know what the hell it looks like yet. And if you start like tearing down the walls a little bit, you can now ha- sit here and go, yeah, you know what? You're an agency. I'm an agency. We might not, we not, we, maybe we do serve the same customer, but there's plenty of them out there and I need your help because a lot of what happens is I own an agency. Therefore, I have no peers. It's a lonely place and that's why they die. A lot of people are just done with it because they, they don't have anybody to talk to. They can't talk down to their employee levels when they have this big complaint. They have to go out. That's why you call me, right? That's why we're friends It's because something happens and you're like, I can't talk to anybody internally. I got to go over here because I'm the CEO. I can't talk down here and be like, yeah. excuse me, customer success person. I'm having a really hard day. Exactly. It's like, no, you can't do that. And on the agency level, the account managers and everybody else that makes up these really great agencies, these owners really need a community of people they can come around and bounce ideas off of and invent and and try to get inspired again um, and I, that's how that's how it grows and that's what that's why an agency would ever need to partner with another agency here's the other part really great partnerships can expedite growth mm. it can yeah and and i think that if you find a really great partner that balances you out that shares your core values that shares your mission you can move quick you can move incredibly fast um, as an agency or just a business in general i mean we 
we have so many blind spots and until we have a friend they're never pointed out especially mm. somebody you respect and that does the same thing you do that speaks venusian right because you're both from venus and i think that most people are too afraid and so they never learn and they never grow and that's just that's that's why they need a partner i love it i love it and that's why they could use a partner like Marcus Murphy and Digital Marketer. So we've got a, a, just a couple minutes left. I just for people listening, if they haven't heard of Digital Marketer, um, I want you to talk about uh, just Digital Marketer in, in general. But also, a lot of agency owners might uh, want to look at the partner program. So yeah. I'd love you to just tell people about that. Yeah. Um, so Digital Marketer has a mission to double the size of 10,000 businesses by 2020. That's insane proposition, by the way. Because at some point, Ryan basically was like, oh, it's like, that's like five years away and we're like not close. Um, so what we decided to do was say, we need people to help us. And that's really where the partner program came from. Aside from the fact that people hit us up every single day and they're like, can you do my Facebook ads? And it's like, no, we can't. So we need to have a community of people who can. And so out of those two camps of being able to like take our mission and take our stuff into places and help double businesses and be an extension of digital market to get to our mission, and the combination of that and actually being like, hey, we have a directory of partners who can actually do this stuff for you or with you, we do not. Those are the two necessities that, it, I mean, it, it just came out of that. And since then it's become like a really, like a, if I'm, you know, as British people say, a proper community, right? And it has bells and whistles and resource centers and people that support it and, um, and a really incredibly uncaged uh, community of people who really rely on each other and, and help each other grow. And so I think that if any agencies listening to this are thinking about wanting to grow their agency or business, this is the community. This is the place. We have the tools. We also have the people. And we have incredible agencies that can help them grow. That's beautiful, man. Yeah, beautiful. Man. People, check it out. Digitalmarketer.com. Forward slash partners. Forward slash partners. Check it out. Uh, TNC Traffic and Conversion. That's where we're at in San Diego. I'm talking to the big cuddly teddy bear himself, Marcus Murphy. You're the only person that can say that to me. Oh, really? Just uh, the only one? You're the only one that does. <laughs> You're the All most right. beloved uh, <laughs> beloved person here. Um, thank you so much for being on the show, Dude, thanks Marcus. Uh, thanks for listening, everyone. Be sure to subscribe to get more content like this every day. And we will see you here. Cheers from sunny San Diego. Thanks for listening to the Proposify Biz Chat with Kyle Racky. For more episodes, check us out on YouTube, iTunes, SoundCloud, or Google Play. Click subscribe to get updated on the latest episodes and be sure to rate and review.